I'll show you something really sad. You see this? And this short, looking at how much it moved and where I exited, making me feel so sad about it. Hey Shreyas, how are you doing? Let me mute this. Okay. Okay, I'm getting this there. Okay, perfect. Uh, I was done for the day. <laughs> Thank you, Go. I'll go through my trades later. Um, what made me exit is my hotkey mistake. Remember when I take my first partial, I exit the rest at break even. I didn't mean to take a partial right here. I wanted to set my limit order to 229.40. But by mistake, I set my limit of order at 239.40. And because 230 is better than 239, I get immediately filled here. So I just exited the break even. If I didn't get sold out, I would have held through this consolidation. Definitely. Mm. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Okay. Um, okay, so you have enough trades. I'll go through your trades, guys, first, and then I'll go through mine because there were some interesting ones. I think you might enjoy some of them or might learn something new. Let's see. Hey, Brian. And okay, perfect. This will be hidden. We'll take the epic pen there, and that's perfect. So Kizer, Kizer traded Twitter. I see you took it to the long side, and you start. Let's see what you saw before this. One. What was your entry? Nine forty four, guys. When you send screenshots, make sure we have the previous time frame, we need to know what was the reason you long the trade, right? I see you managed it really well, but let's see what you saw there. You took Twitter at 9.42 to the long side. Now, yeah, now it's more visible actually. 9.46, yeah. So you can see my screen, guys, and I'm sharing Twitter. That's the epic pen. Kizer took it to the long side right on this candle right here. And here we could see it more clear, right? It dropped down at the open on the 15 minute chart. It also dropped down, so he took it at 15 minute opening range breakout. It was selling off, selling off, got hit by some, by some sort of support. There is no daily level, but something held it. It immediately got both back up, got both back up. Closed as a hammer, a doji, and a hammer on the 15 minute chart, and finally it opened at a new high. At a new high, there is the consolidation. Small ABCD pattern on a reversal pattern, and Kizer took it to the long side right here. If I take it to the long side here, at the breakout, you guys know what my stop loss is. It's a new one minute high, which is more than enough for it. And why is that? The moment it does the new low, it will look like a reverse A, B, C, D pattern, which would be a good reason to exit. And this candle right here, it would have definitely scared me out a little bit. Why is that? We're having a reverse hammer right here. We're having a small reverse hammer right here. Then we're having a new low. It would have scared me out, but definitely not a good reason to exit because we have our stop loss right there. And yet eventually worked out on the five minute charts. I see that a hammer, a doji, and a new five minute high after the doji. So, yeah, your entry, it was perfect. I love it. I couldn't think of a better entry than that. And your partials, was it 1R? It was 1R the partial. That's good. I wanted to ask you why you existed all here. But I see you actually held it. 
all the way to 3470. I like how much health. Good job with this trade hither. Let's see there. Again, we're having a lot of trades today. I'll go through one trade for everyone. And then if we have time, I'll get back to the to the rest of the trades. Ivy, let's see what you Ivy did. What are those numbers here? Are they helpful on your trades? I don't really use them. You are still live in this trade right now. So let's see what happened there. I see you took it first to the long side and you got subbed out. And then you took it to the short side if I'm not wrong. Right? So look at this. I could tell you why not to take this trade to the long side. I like that you flipped and took it to the short side after. That's the short. That's the partial. That's the partial. But the long, there is a reason not to take it to the long side. And guys, can you... Tell me why wouldn't you take this trade to the long side or what would you be waiting for when you're looking at this trade? Engulfing on the 5 minute chart. That's a good reason. Another reason. Let's have more reasons. General trend is down. I like that. So look at this. First of all, it opened strong. It did a huge five minute candle and I think it's around $1, $2, right? So this was so strong. And when the opening is so strong and then it gets engulfed and drops below view of, this is just a weak sign, right? It dropped down. It did an engulfing. It dropped down. Did some sort of double bot. Yes, it looks like a reversal there. But then you're having a lot of resistance ahead. A lot of resistance here, a lot of resistance there. I mean, it's just on a downtrend with a bunch of resistance ahead. On the five minute chart, it tried to break up a view up, it pulled back. I like this hammer. Now, this shows me that this stock might still have some potential to go to the long side. But look, no new five minute high. Every time it's just doing lower high, lower high, lower high. And yes, we almost had an engulfing right there, but still no new five minute high. On the two minute chart, where was your entry to the long side? Actually, you took it twice to the short side. I thought you first took it to the long side. I see short, stop, short. I could say that you just had a tight stop loss on this one. I thought it was a long and a stop and then a short, but I could see you actually tried it twice to the short side. And the short there, it wasn't bad. I like that one. It was making lower highs. Lower highs, you took it to the short side. Stop loss would be somewhere right here. At the first level, it bounced off. Here you are having a descending triangle. You took it to the short side one. It's it made a, an M shape or a triple top. Everyone is lower than the first one. Tight stop loss and you start partialing. So yeah, I actually did it well. I thought you took it to the long side here, but short, yeah, no problem with that. Are you still in this trade? You said you're still live in this one. Yeah, you're still live in it. And how much of your position you're still having there? I see a partial right here, and I think that partial was good because at least it was a two hours with a tight stop loss. Another partial here wasn't bad. It did, it, it almost closed as hammer. I think two partials right there. I mean, not bad. A hammer at the low of the day, above a daily level with an increasing volume, making higher highs. Not bad partial there. You're still having 55% of position. Good job on this one. So yeah, hold on to it and make sure to partial smart on this one. This is a good trade. Hmm. Let's see Tyler. Tyler also traded. Hotkey stop loss error on the last red triangle. Let's see what you got there. So this is Twitter, it's on a downtrend. I like this a lot, I love when I see three bars, red, green, red, and I'll keep saying this in every trade review till you get used to this one, guys. Red, green, red, this team wins twice, on a downtrend, 
and then you took it to the shared side closer to the nine and the one in the chat. I would have waited a little bit right here. Why is that? Um, you could see here, sort of a hammer, sort of an engulfing, not that we should be afraid of this one minute chart, but then it's making higher highs. It still didn't do a low. On this candle, it still didn't close, right? So it could continue just making higher highs and higher lows, pulling back at least to the 9, to VOP, or whatever it wants to go to. I would have waited for a little bit more consolidation. If it goes without me, then let it go. But better to wait sometimes for a confirmation after a huge drop, right? Um, other than that, it was a good one. I like where you partialed. I love partialing at those spikes. Why is that? When it's making lower lows and lower highs on the one minute chart, it's just trending. There is no reason to partial. But once it spikes, sometimes at the low of the spike, it just does an engulfing and starts coming back. I don't know what's the reason why is that happening, but taking some partials at spikes, especially if you hit your risk to reward, is a really smart idea. So you add it to the short side here. Now this add I wouldn't have added. And there is one reason. Would you take this to the short side if you weren't in this position looking at the five minute chart? On the one minute chart, it looks like it dropped down, like it pulled back to the nine moving average on the one minute chart. It looks like it held it and you took it to the short side and it did work out in this case. But yeah. On the five minute chart, look at this. No pullbacks from 34.40 all the way to 33.60. 80 cents drop with no pullbacks. We need to get good entries at pullbacks. This wasn't bad entry. An entry around here wouldn't have been bad to the short side. An entry around here wouldn't have been bad to the short side. Even an entry around here, I wouldn't take it because it's so much extended and this pullback wasn't enough after this huge drop. But even this entry isn't bad because at least here we had a pullback, right? Here, no pullbacks. It's just dropping and dropping and dropping and you add it on the way. It could have just simply went against you, pulled back to the 9 and got you out from a good entry, from a good position. And remember, the 9 moving average in the 1 minute chart, it's always close to the price action. So pull back to the 9 moving average in the 1 minute chart, especially later on the, later on the day, they are not so much reliable. And this, I see, this was an error you said, right? This chart here. Okay, that's good. That's good. Other than that, I like that. You held well, you partialed well. That's me. One thing though, when you shorted it here, what was your stop loss? Above the level you drew, um, let me see, I can't really see it. I can't really see a level right there, the blue one. Yeah, this entry right here, when you took it, what was your stop loss? No, the second, the first one short, the first short. Above the nine, yeah, it was really tight. I think you got a really good risk to reward here and a good profit, but yeah. yeah with that tight stop loss, you definitely got a good trade. And I like the entry, just a little bit of patience would have been amazing. Other than that, you did really well. <clears throat> Ramlal, let's see what you Ramlal did on TVIX. Ramlal, I, I read some of your rules and you said you are not trading TVIX. You, you said like 10 times, don't trade TVIX, it's a pain, but you still traded it, right? <laughs> I see you made money on it at least. You see, I, I'll tell you one thing. You know what's the worst thing about breaking rules? The worst thing which could happen is making money when you're breaking your rules. When you're breaking your rules and you're making money on that, most of the time you just keep breaking them, right? He did not find good things. Okay, no problem. Let's see what you did here. You took it to the long side on the pullback, I assume, right? And you traded off the one minute chart, I assume, because you sent the one minute chart. 
let's look at the five charts and how it looked like the let's say a period from 9 35 to 11 and you took it long at around 10 o'clock let's close this i'm going to give you a x <clears throat> so let's see here this is it and this is the five minute chart so look at this guys i want to show you something hmm. so the entry to the long side let's just see exactly where it was 10 or 5 that's it 9 10 10 5 he took an entry somewhere right here right 10 or 5 10 or 2 somewhere right here right look at this this is why you should uh look at more time frames when you are trading it was so strong and i like that i like that you're long biased on a stock which is uptrending getting in with the trend at least personally for me is much better because it's easier to make money with the trend rather than trying to catch a reversal especially with a late entry so you're yeah, not bad to be long biased on this one but look at this what did it do shooting star at the high of the day then it's making lower lows and lower highs or at least lower lows lower lows and yes on the one minute chart it did a new one minute high but on the five minute chart it's still down trending and what is the end of the pullback especially later in the day or after 30 minutes the end of the pullback is the moment it makes a new high i would do this type of trades from the one minute chart the first 10 minutes five minutes 15 minutes when the fifth one the five minute chart are um five minute candles are still not fully formed but later when you have a pattern i would wait for a little bit more confirmation the second thing look at the 15 minute chart you see this it did a huge move and it did doji below a moving average and a new 15 minute low this is a weak sign this is a reversal sign so a huge move here a reverse hammer here a huge move here a doji there with a new 15 minute low a new five minute low i will not be long bias on this one unless other time frames start showing me some pattern or some entry signals only new one minute high here is definitely not enough why is that look at this it did a new one minute high here right it did a new one minute high here did this work if i took it to the long side this didn't work did this work not really this not really if you took it here you would have also been stopped out so we need to implement more time frames more indicators do you recommend use other time frames other than we mentioned the five minute charts the one and the five could be enough especially to trade the first one hour you don't really need bigger time frames but i personally don't use the level two i don't use the time and sales i need more time frames because i trade of the moving averages only um and again Look at this a pullback and yes it did a new five minute high would i take it to the long side because of this five minute high i personally wouldn't because i see how the 15 minute chart looks like and my first support which i will really pay attention to would be view up and the nine on the 15 minute chart this candle i like it so much a hammer literally bouncing off view up and making a new high and then it just goes up at least here i could see how it started cleanly changing the trend see rather than trying to catch it on the downtrend the 9 and the 20 emas uh 50 and 200 SMAs. i will go through some of the trades i did they were based on different time frames and i will let you know why i have taken them my trades from today Once we're done with the trades we're having here, I'll share them all. So let's see Jeremy now. Actually, let's see your other entries first. So this was your first entry we talked about. Then you added to the long side at 940 and a lot of ads. And look at this. I could see that you are trading a lot of the one minute chart, right? yes this is a pattern this is an abcd pattern it's not a bad one and you took it to the long side it's a pullback to the nine moving average in the one minute chart because of which you again took it to the long side right then 
another pullback and a breakout and you took it to the long side on the new one minute high it's because of you are trading a lot of the one minute chart and i would say you didn't do bad here and uh, you made enough money on those money on those trades but why is that it's because it's clearly trending you will not have those type of stocks which are clearly trending of the nine moving average and the one minute chart every day it's so rare to see these patterns and to get lucky uh on these type of trades every time and this is another reason why not to use the one minute chart if it's really vigorous and it's uh, really choppy the one minute chart would not be the best one to trade it off and remember one thing the tvix is going against the spy so look at spy what it's doing where it's going where it's breaking out is the spy doing for example a reverse abcd pattern if yes then go for tvx for the for the abcd pattern to the long side try to implement those both charts and both indicators in your favor Jeremy traded AAL. Now this look, um, I wouldn't say it's so extended. I like this setup. It is extended, yeah, actually, but I like this setup. And I would have been also a little bit short biased at this one. Guys, yes, it is extended, but can you tell me why this it, not an A plus setup? Yes, not an A setup, definitely. But it still was a good setup. Can you tell me why or what setup you see here? Look at the five minute chart, it's more clear on the five minute chart, I assume. You could see it in the 15 as well. It is an ABCD pattern, sort of, yes, but more curling under the nine moving average, that's something else I like, yeah. But the setup is Look at this, one touch, second touch, third touch here, one touch, second touch, third touch here. What is this? Descending, yes, IG, descend, yes, triangle, that's it, it's a descending triangle. This is a clear descending triangle. And I like it so much. Yes, it looks extended on the 15 minute chart, but we're having ex exceptions, right? Every time we're in a trade, um, remember, even I told you when we're trading ABCD patterns, when it's so trending, when it's so extended to the long side, I am not taking this ABCD pattern for a trend continuation when it's so far from the nine moving average, unless we're having two dojis. If those candles are two dojis, I might make an exception and take it to the long side. Same thing here. When will I take a stock for a trend continuation when it's already extended, when it already did one dollar move? I will take it for a breakout. Let me just close this. It got frozen. And I'll open it again. I will take it for the breakout. This is a descending triangle here. It's clearly holding this level, holding this level, holding this level. Some might say, why would you take it to the short side when it's sitting above? A support area yes it's sitting at a support area but remember abcd pattern bull flags bear flags ascending triangles descending triangles those are breakout setups and we're trading them for the breakout and yes it's sitting at a support area but i could see clearly that it's making every wave it's making a lower high a lower high a lower high so it's down trending it's more weak than it's strong then the range gets tighter and tighter and tighter and there are three possible entries for the descending triangle if you see clearly that this is a descending triangle you could get an entry as close as possible to the resistance to get a good move and partial before the breakout and at the breakout second entry you get it right before the breakout area and the third entry you get it at the breakout area and each entry has its own stop loss if you take it to the long side at the breakout or after the breakout your stop loss would be so tight it would be only one minute high two minute highs or a little bit into the range why is that because most of the time when the stocks are breaking down they either never get back 
to the previous support or to the range or they break down pull back to the previous support this previous support starts acting as a resistance and then it continues going down this is why after the breakout my stop loss is really tight if you get it somewhere here or somewhere here my stop loss would be the previous wave high Christopher, dojis are indecision candles, right? What's an indecision candle? It means not the buyers nor the sellers want the battle. So what decides the movement is this very next candle. If it breaks up, then not the buyers, not the sellers one here, not the buyers, not the sellers one here, but here the buyers won and I will go with the buyers. If it breaks down, then yes, it's a reversal candle. So Doji's, they are not a reversal candle and candles and they are not trend continuation candles. Um, they are just indecision candles and you wait for the candle which actually decides who won, the buyers or the sellers. Yes, later on the day, definitely I'm watching the five minute chart, 15 minute chart. This one is a good example. You could see that the first candle sellers won next candle buyers won next candle none of them won and then finally the sellers actually winning with the stock which gap down i assume it gap down and with a bunch of resistance ahead i definitely go to the short side here you're welcome let's see Another trade there. Mark. Mm. Setup, price level breakout. Again, less the epic pain. Uh, Mike Hagman, this is a question from YouTube. 95% uh, of my trades, I don't use the level 2 I'm, and I'm consistent with it. I'm not saying that using the level 2 is bad. It gives you a lot of advantage if you're using it well. And we have uh, a member in our community, Thor. He is trading most of the time from the level 2. He's doing really well with that. But with my set style and my strategies, I don't really need the level 2 at all. So... Ala, I, w I didn't have them before. I don't want to tell new members to use a lot of time frames. The 1, the 5, the 2, the 15, they might get a lot distracting. Uh, but at least the 15 minute chart, it's I like it so much. It's really important, in my opinion. So, Mark, price level breakout. Trade management, you did not respect the stop loss. 1548, this was your stop loss. Entered before the first minute, should have waited for two minutes or five minutes for an entry. Second trade was just chasing and yeah, you had a hot day. I see that. So SFIX, first of all, what's the average true range on SFIX? That's what I would like to know. Let me quickly check it, okay? So let's go for SFIX. Let's go for the daily. Study config on not that chart area. Let's add area here. Let's add the average true range. And let's zoom it out a little bit. And we could see that the average true range is somewhere around 140, right? Now, let's get back to your trade on SFIX. Because for price breakouts, for chase, or for getting into a trend which didn't have any pullbacks, we definitely always need the, to know the average true range. And you could see here, it moved from 14.20 all the way to 15.30. It moved $1.30, which is the average true range. You have only 15 cents, and I'm not more for it to move. And I'm not telling you that it will not move more. It can definitely go to 16, 20, 25, it can move 10, 20 dollars. The market is, it can do anything, right? But most of the time, and we go for most of the time, right? The average true range is showing you the average. We try to go for the average. If this move from here to here, let's say it was 40 cents, and you know that SFIX is moving on the daily, $1.30, and the market just opened, uh, we, we have a lot of volume, the market is volatile, it can go to this 1.30 in 2-3 minutes, I would like this entry. 
but since it already did the average move, I'll just ignore it. This is the first thing. That is. Have a good day, Kizer. Now, look at this here. A doji, a red candle, holding a moving average, right? And look at this. This is how much? 14.50 to somewhere around 15, right? 50 cents. In a range. This is not happening here. This is happening at the open. And you know that you have a little bit maybe of daily bias. You have the pre-market bias. It's above all the moving averages. 50 cents move right here. It still have around $1 move. This entry right here wouldn't be so bad. You take it to the long side at 15. You put your stop loss at 14.50. Uh, and you know you have around $1 move. You'll start partialing at the round number, let's say 15.50. The round number 16. Look at this. It moved only to the $16, which is the $1, which is the average true range of one and a half. A little bit more than that, right? And you took it to the long side again one more time. And good that you're knowing it, just as a reminder. You took it again to the long side after it did the whole average move. So average to range is really important and we need to check for it. You don't need to add it every time on your daily chart to write a note. You could just keep the daily, the daily chart open and just see how much it moves in average in daily. It moves around $1, $2 and you'll just have that idea in your head. And if you're trading the same stocks over and over, you'll get the feel of it also. You're welcome. Let's see what Henry did. And guys, Henry again is one of the guys who is trading of the larger time frame. So look at this. His trades are based on the 15 minute chart, the 30 minute chart, and the 60 minute chart. I remember he used the 5 minute chart once, but I think he removed it again. Did you remove it, Henry? Why did you remove it? I remember you had the 5 minute charts. Were they ruining your trades? You're welcome, Mike Hagman. You prefer 15 minute chart at me. And that's good. Look at this. Everyone has his own trading style. And as long as you are consistent with your trading style, you don't need to change it. You could have the one and the five only if you're trading the open and you're trading the momentum chart. You could have the one minute chart only if you're good at trading with the one minute chart and you're good at managing it and you're good at putting your stop loss not at a new one minute high or low at the waves. And you could trade only of the higher time frames if you want to be patient about your entries. And look at this, he didn't take any entry the first one hour. He waited for a setup, he waited for more, for more confirmations, and only then he took it to the short side. And I assume this was because of the new 60 minute low? Was it Henry? <laughs> Christopher, same thing here. The one and the five are really important for me, especially to get entries. <laughs> I see it was a break of the previous day close and you 60 minute low were there were those on your only confirmation so you have something else a descending triangle on the 15 minute sh minute below all the moving averages on all the time frames okay I see it I think if we zoom it in, it will be more clear, but look at these guys, it's forming some sort of descending triangle, it did help this level right here, for around 30 minutes, this would be a descending triangle, I would love to see this touching it more, one more time at least for it to be a clear triangle, but it is a descending triangle, took it to the short side there, and you were patient about your partials, did you get your 2 to 1 or you held for a, for a bigger move? Christopher, we all focus on the one minute chart when we start, but later you'll definitely get switched to the 5 and the 10. 3 to 1 initially and then every 6 to 12 cents based on the level 2. And look at this, Henry is using the level 2. I never used the level 2, but Henry used it and he got a good move out of it. There, there is no one right way of trading. If you feel good about trading with your own style, with your own indicators and uh, you're consistent because of that, just continue doing whatever you're doing. If you are trading your own style and your setup and you keep losing money, then you should know that there is something wrong with your style, something wrong with your setup. You need to adjust it or ask for help. Uh, 
I'm not sure how much Henry Barshall here, but yeah, let's let him answer that. 20% or 33%. I assume you got with a really he heavy size there. Mm, Twitter. Whose trade was this again? One more time, let's check. It's power. Let's see what you did there. You took it. Okay, this one I like. Not so much, but it doesn't look bad for a long ride there. Let's check the five minute chart first. So this was 9.36 and I love checking the five minute chart just to know where the nine moving average was. So look at this guys. This is not a bad trade. This was one of the parabolic reversal trades I was talking to you about. It dropped down, did the reverse ABCD pattern, dropped down more, two dojis, I like that. One doji, another doji, and the new one minute high. He didn't rush it, he didn't take it at the bottom, didn't take it here, waited for the new one minute high, took it to the long side, put his stop loss somewhere right there. And what would be my first target in this case? I would wait for my 2 to 1 or the 9 on the 5 and the 9 on the 5 here was so far. So at least it would be view up. You see this? Guys? It's so far the closest level it has on the 5 minute chart is view up. On the 1 minute chart it did around $1 drop. And $1 drop on $33 stock it's not a little. It's a lot. Right? Uh, the average true range on this thing is a dollar and a half. It's somewhere around a dollar and a half, and it did drop. Yeah, not a dollar. Yeah, it did drop around a dollar. So did two dojis, new high, took it to the long side, and yes, I would do that. I would not do that. I mean, I was looking at it, but I couldn't do that. <laughs> but yeah, this was a good trade. Now let's go through some of my trades. Someone wanted to ask me how I'm tra trading of the bigger time frames. Uh, this is a trade based on bigger time frames. I'll get through it. BA, BA was kind of yes, but it wasn't not of the 15 minute chart, it was of the 5 only. And VAX was based on the bigger time frame. So look at these guys. You might, if you look at the 1 minute chart and the 5 minute chart, you might say, why would you short this thing? It's not so clear, right? Look at this. Look at the 5 minute chart. And the 5 minute chart is kind of cl clear. A double top, second top lower than the first time, new, 5 minute low right new one minute low but if i watch only this i will not get enough confirmation for my trades um watching the other time frames gave me a little bit of confidence first of all i see on the daily chart look at this how it's bleeding two days it dropped five dollars today it gapped up and i had two plans in my head First one, if it goes above $13, I take it to the long side. If it starts bleeding, I might take it to the short side. I had my plan and then I was just waiting. And look at this. What are we having at the open? New 30 minute low, a descending triangle on the 15 minute chart, but I took it for the breakout. New 5 minute low, new 1 minute low. All the time frames are short. The daily isn't that weak, but all the other time frames are weak and all the resistance is above. So took it to the short side and then just started partialing. A little bit of over partialing, yes. Not really proud of that. Last partial closer to $11, which is a round number. And I should have left at least 5 or 10% because I just missed a bigger move, unfortunately. But yeah, look at this. Traded mainly because of the higher time frames. Let's go to CCL. Do you use limit bounded or straight market orders? I use limit, uh, marketable limit orders with 10 cents difference. Uh, let's get to NVX, where was my stop loss? So on NVX, when I shorted it, I just put my stop loss right here, right in the range. Because I saw that at the open, it tried to break up, it tried to break this consolidation and it was curling below the nine moving average, which I actually like but then it just started dropping down it broke this small consolidation right here the breakout area it broke the breakout area on the five minute chart broke almost broke the breakout area on the 15 minute chart new 30 minute low and i just put it right here it was so tight 
it's not so bad actually, it's around 30 cents. So it's decent, I think. Uh, do you manually stop? No, it's hotkey. Kyle's hotkeys, I double click on where I want my stop loss to be. Click on the hotkey and it put an automatic stop loss and calculates the share size. <laughs> Thanks, Jeremy. So look at the CCL and I'll show you. I tried it twice. And that's why we day trade. If you have a plan, sometimes you might get into the entry, but you might exit. If the plan still didn't fail, it's not a bad idea to re-enter. And I'll tell you now, I'll let you know why I re-entered right here. So CCL, look at the daily chart. You see this daily chart? Who would want to take this thing to the long? This is just my thinking. When it dropped all the way from 52, just clear downtrend to $20. Why would I invest in this company? I mean, I, I, I wouldn't take it to the long side. Now I have my short buys from the data. I only need a good entry to take it to the short side. At the open, open strong, broke below view up, an engulfing crack setup, but I didn't take it to the short side here because this was just too much. I couldn't put my stop loss at a new one minute high. $1 stop loss means I need $2 move. It's not one dollar stop loss. Around sixty cents stop loss means I need a dollar and a twenty cents move. It did do that, but I thought at the moment it was so much, and I just decided to watch it. And look at this. I didn't chase it, and that's the good thing. You never chase stock when it's clearly bleeding that way. If you want to take it to the long side here, that's better than chasing it to the long side on the downside. Why is that? This is a parabolic drop. Remember, guys, parabolic drop. With no pullbacks, the moment it makes a new high, this is a good entry, good stop loss, and just partial. But I just was short biased, and I wanted to wait for a setup to the short side. Now look at this. What is this? This is a pullback, and this is a new one minute low. Why didn't I short it here? Some of you might know. This is their type of obesity pattern. Why didn't I short it here? On this pullback, on the new low. Look at this, always have a plan and try to respect your rules and your setups. Not so extended, it got to the 9, but there is something about this pullback. That's it, Ryan. So what was this kind of pullback? Parabolic move, you see? So this pullback, it forced itself to the 9 moving average uh, on the 5 minute chart. When I see a stock dropping down, then consolidating, get the 9 moving average is getting closer to it, it's rejecting it, and then bounces off it and drops, this is a good entry, not no problem. If it's dropping down, pulling back slightly, Getting to the 9 moving average, rejecting it and dropping, I would take it to the short side. But when it forces itself to the 9 moving average, on the first low, I wouldn't take it to the short side. I would wait for that M shape. And I saw the M shape here. M shape, so it tried to break up, failed, and I took it to the short side. What, my, what was my stop loss? My stop loss was the second high. And I get stopped out. Look, what happened here? It did break out, right? You see? It did break out. But buyers aren't strong. Once it did break out, it immediately got sold out. This is weak. If the stock is breaking out, breaking consolidation area, but it doesn't have enough power or strength to continue its move, it's weak. It closed as a shooting star. Then it did a new low. I took it to the short side. Just tightened my stop loss because I knew this wouldn't go back. This wasn't really smart, but yeah. Took it to the short side, put my stop loss, and then started partialing. Added on a small descending triangle on the one minute chart. And that was it. I didn't aim for a huge move. I exited at a new five minute high because it did a wave with the second low higher than the first one. But remember what I'm talking, is talking about in my trading reviews all the time? As long as it's still holding below the nine on the five minute chart, or below the 9 moving average, it's still good. I didn't respect this rule. I just decided to exit. And I missed a really good move because of that. See this? Um, Yusuf is asking for the open position. You use tape trading level 2 and time and sales? Uh, no, Yusuf. I don't use level 2 and time and sales on 95% of my trades. I just check the pattern, I see, or just try to think what people are going to do. 
in this position and I just go for the psychology of the other traders. I mean, I think what would I do in this case and what would other traders do? If there are, or if my decision is unclear, I mean, I might take it to the long side if it does this and I might take it to the short side if it does this and this chart showing me that this is strong. This chart is showing me that this is short. I just avoid these type of stocks and I go and watch something else. Kevin, I'm watching three stocks at one time. I have the SPY opened on another monitor, so it's four, but I'm not watching the SPY. I'm just trying to make sure that the stock is either independent, independent or if it's following the SPY, that it's going to do a good setup along with the SPY. Did you get in on an uptick CCL was selling a restriction? Wasn't it? Yes, it was. And uh, I got in on an uptick and I missed a, a lot of trades. I actually wanted to short HL. Let me show you HL, but I couldn't get filled on this one because it was on short selling restriction. You see this pattern here? Now, this is the second type of ABCD pattern which I was talking to you about. It dropped down. This is not a parabolic pullback. It's a pullback to the non moving average, but it's kind of clear. It's not only one or two candles which are really volatile getting to the non moving average. You see this? It's pulling back nicely. It also did an M shape, rejected the 50 moving average, and I hit my hotkey to short it here on a new one minute low. This, we had an M shape here. Why M shape? Because this is higher, um, higher high and higher high here. So we're having an M shape here. I tried to short it here, but unfortunately, because it's on short selling restriction, I couldn't get filled and I missed this move as well. It was five cents stop loss trade. I tried to short it one more time here at the breakout for the descending triangle, but again, I couldn't get filled. So I missed a lot of trades today because the whole market is on SSR. Yes, Jeremy, if the stock is uh, dropping, I want my ideal pullback on ABCD patterns is 50 to 70% pullback. 80% still wouldn't be bad. If the stock is so, so weak like this, I would go for 30% pullback if it's close to the nine moving average. But less than that, I would not really like it. Christopher, uh, you can try everything. When I started trading, I was trading momentum, I was trading ABCD patterns, reversals, pullbacks, flags, uh, I don't know, head and shoulders, literally, double tops, double bottoms, literally everything. But uh, eventually you will get a feel of what you like more and then just stick to it and keep adjusting it. You can make money with any strategy, with double tops, with double bottoms, with reversals, with whatever you want to make, but make sure you're focusing on one thing. Now you can explore, you can trade everything, but uh, try to find that thing which suits you, which you like more, and stick to it. And look at this. I have been trading on ABCD patterns for a long time. Now I'm trading parabolic reversals because I know that stocks, when they are dropping so much, when they are so far from the nine moving average, they usually tend to pull back, especially if there is no pullback. And from that trend continuation, I'm going now into a reversal. How is that? Look at this, HAL. Dropping a lot, literally with no pullbacks, first new high, and I know that the stock at one moment will make a pullback. Traders will step in, I'm um, sorry, buyers will start partially their position at the first sign of strength. New one minute high, double bot with the second bot harder than the first one. The nine is so far, I could take it to the long here, I could take it to the long here, and wait to it to get closer to the nine, because I know that on reverse ABCD patterns later on the day, stocks usually tend to go closer to the nine moving average. So yes, I was trading one setup, but from that one setup, I'm getting another setup because I'm seeing it happening over and over and over. So you don't need a lot of setups to make money. You need only one and then out of that one setup, just build yourself. Let's see one more trade since we have time or maybe two. If you guys have questions, you can definitely ask. 
Yeah, you can share it. So Ramdal traded AMD to the long side here. And again, let's see the five minute chart. This is 9.55. Nine fifty-five, and look. Okay, now I like this. This one Ramlar, it was so good. I don't know if you traded it off the one-minute chart or off the five-minute chart. But look at these guys. On the five-minute chart, the stock was dropping down, right? But every time it's wicking up, it's wicking up, and then again it's making wicks, right? This is just showing you some buying pressure. On the fifteen-minute chart, it's closing as a doji above a moving average. On the five-minute chart. It's making a new high and on the one minute chart, it's making a new high. So yes, all the time frames are showing you a potential reversal or at least a pullback to the level which is holding it. And that was a good entry to the long side. Let me open it one more time. There it is. See this one? So yeah, it was a really good trade. Now, it was a little bit earlier than the breakout or I think it was actually at the breakout because this was the close of those candles. So right here. But yeah, this was a good trade, Ramlal. One thing though, I would have held it a little bit more. I don't know why you partial view up. I think maybe because you are believing that in this case, view up is strong level, which is holding the price action, right? I wouldn't think like that for one reason. It broke it here. It broke it here. It broke it here. And since it's breaking this level every time, it just shows you that this is not the level which is holding the price. It's not the strongest level to get all out. Partial, maybe yes. But all out, I would go first for this moving average right here, which held the price a little bit earlier. And then if it goes higher, then higher. Because you had a good entry on this one. And when you get a good entry, you try to get as much as possible from it. IG, let's see what you shared with us. Parabolic reversal, I guess. And look at this, guys. This is a really like, this is something, guys. I think this is not from today, right? This is definitely not from today because I was talking with the trader on a call. We were trading the open together and we missed this trade. Okay, this is the second day. It's last week because I remember this one. We both missed it. So look at this, guys. This is a good example of parabolic reversal. Stock is dropping down with no pullbacks. Dropping down with no pullbacks. Then it's finding some sort of support. Slightly going higher. I would go for an earlier entry, but still not bad. Patience is <laughs> always pays off. You waited for a new five minute high. The closest resistance is view up or the nine. I would ignore the nine and the 20 on the one minute chart. And it actually was above it. So it was perfect. But I would totally ignore the nine and the, uh, nine and the 20 on the one if it was above it because they're close, always close to the price action. So the first or closest level you have, previous day close, I would ignore it because it doesn't respect it. It just went through it as it doesn't exist and went here through it as it doesn't exist. So the 90s, the 20, I think you had limit orders, that's why you got filled, right? Yeah, you had limit orders because in this spike, all your, all your limits just immediately got filled. And I love when that happens, when you get filled at the spike or at the high. Yeah, so nice one. And look at this again, we always know when the, the stock, when it's dropping down, it will do a pullback, but we never know, will it be a reversal or a pullback? We go in for a pullback, in case it goes to the 9, rejects it, we just exit all out at the at the D level, A, B, C, D, we just exit at the D and maybe flick if you like to flip or just be done with the day if this trade was enough. But if this trade actually reverses, then you will definitely make a decent amount of money with that stop loss on this on them. That's it, IG. I mean, when we get into these type of trades, our aim is just the nine and the five minute chart, just for a pullback, right? But when it happens uh, to break it and it makes it a better move, just accept it. It's just a bonus. If I took this trade, I would put my stop loss either here or at the week, but I think I wouldn't put it at the week. I would just put it at this level. At this week, your stop loss 40 to 70 IG. Yeah, that's smart. I mean, I like it. I usually go for tight stop losses because of which I get subbed out. Same thing which happened to my CCL trade. 
CCL, CCL, that's it. Yeah, it's just that because I went for a tight stop loss, I get subbed out. I would have been subbed out anyway, even if I gave it some room there, so not bad. Now look at BA. One more thing, I wanted to take this thing to the, to the long side here for a parabolic reversal, but I missed this thing because I was in another trade. Then it did a drop down, a pullback. Now this is a parabolic reversal. I didn't wait for the M shape, but I could see that it didn't do this. It didn't do only one candle and then a low and then I take it on the new low. I just saw it slightly dropping down. It just held it. I took it to the short side and it was close to the non moving average, put my stop loss above this level. And unfortunately, but yeah, unfortunately, actually it wasn't that level. My stop loss was here. Let me be honest. That was my stop loss right there. And unfortunately, this partial was horrible. Look at the 15 minute chart. Actually, this was a good entry on the 15 minute chart. I just stopped looking at it after. Huge drop, pull back to view up, small candle which couldn't break the high of the previous one, and then a new low. This is a good reverse ABCD pattern on the 15 minute chart. This was a hotkey mistake. I wanted to set a limit set a limit order here. Somewhere here. But instead of setting it at 229.40, I set it at 239.40. And because 230 is better than 239, I just immediately get filled here. I could hold it, but my rule is telling me that once I take partial, my stop loss is at break even and I, n I try to not break those major rules. Major rules like get out at break even after partialing, um, me another major rule is never average down, never, never average up, never trade after you hit your max loss. Those rules I never break. Hotkey mistake, no hotkey mistake, just always respect them. I don't want to make a habit out of it. Once you do it once, you'll do it again, right? Okay, so that's it, guys. Um, thank you for sharing your trades. Uh, the next trade review session, it will be on Thursday. Uh, I'll, it will be again here in the classroom, and I'll be sharing it in on YouTube. Thank you guys on YouTube for coming here. Thank you for your questions and uh, have a great day everyone.